and gentlemen, welcome to the happening. Are you ready for a frenzy? Yeah. I'm glad to hear it. Before we go any further, you'll notice there's some unusual play people playing with the group this evening. So let's have a hand for those extra people. Mr. Ray Carlis on the saxophone. Yeah. Rita Saunders and Debbie McGriff on the backing vocals. Yeah. Who are here, ladies and gentlemen, because they will be performing with somebody very special, a mystery man whose name I will reveal in a moment. First of all, let's talk about the guests we've got this week. We're here in the centre of London, it's raining outside, but sunshine will be emanating from this stage. This stage, which will have a particularly international flavour this evening, as you'll see, ladies and gentlemen, acts brought from every corner of the globe. For instance, comedy-wise, we have Mr. Malcolm Hardy and Mr. Mickey Hutton. Yes, indeedy. Musically, we have the incredibly beautiful, silky, delicious, lovely tones of that great new soul singer, Mr. Ha, Will Downing, ladies and gentlemen. And, of course, the mystery man who these two girls will be singing with later, Mr. Great Soul Singer himself, Ben E. King, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> but now truly, now truly international star, ladies and gentlemen. A man, just international and a star. I think I've probably said that enough now. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome onto this stage, all the way from over there, the fabulous Tony. <laughs> Where's the place where the shops are terrific, where the traffic lights shine and the roads are quite wide? Where's the place which is never so horrific, where you only feel down if a loved one has died? Where's the place where the women all are female, where the men drink beer and put shelves up at night? Where the plants have seeds, where the dogs have leaves, where the lost always want to be found? Praise the Lord, it's great to be Swindon bound. <laughs> Where's the place where a club is sometimes open, where the people tell jokes and their pets never cry? Where's the place where the hills are always sloping, where the young have sex and the elderly die? Where's the place where the buses are impressive, where arson can really set things alight? Where green mean go, where the children grow, where the roundabouts are usually round? Praise the Lord, it's great to be Swindon bound. Let's hear you sing it. Swindon bound. Without you I'm bare, my friend, Swindon, without you I'm bare, my friend. Some folk may find cause to doubt you, but what would Wiltshire be without you? Doesn't bear thinking about, does it? Good old Swindon, you put the wilt in Wiltshire, yes you did. Where's the place which has buildings all around you, where the steps go up but can also go down? Where's the place where the tarmac will astound you, where fields are green and the soil is dark brown? Where's the place where today proceeds tomorrow, where the kids are cute and the clergy polite? Where the M4 goes, where the water flows, where the traffic signals simply abound? Praise the Lord, it's great to be Swindon bound. Where the soap is clean, where the meat is lean, where the one-way system's basically sound. Praise the Lord, it's great to be Swindon. Praise the Lord, it's great to be Swindon. Praise the Lord, it's great to be Swindon bound. Tony, Tony Hawk's there then, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's proper show business event. I think you'd agree with that, wouldn't you? Yes, indeed. And because of that, our next act is one of the top showbiz people that I know personally. I, I, if, I, if I did play golf, I'd play it with him. If I were going to drink and be sick, I'd do it with him. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> the man himself, the man of modern show business, please welcome, and is an expression he'd use himself, all the way from over there, Mr. Malcolm Oi Oi Hardy! <laughs> My name's Malcolm Hardy. I'm going to be here for the next nine hours. <laughs> I actually normally go on last, um, but I've got a gig to do later on in Swindon with a bloke in a green suit. 
Anyone in this vast auditorium heard of the blues? Yeah. I'll try that again, but this time with style. Anyone heard of the blues? Yeah. I invented them. The blues came from a place in South East London called Deptford. Anyone here from Deptford? Yeah. Give us a lift home. <laughs> Anyone here from uh, Liverpool, by the way? Yeah, I was £10, buy yourself a house. <laughs> no, you've got to be cruel to be kind. I'm going to play the blues on this rusty old harmonica, which I just happen to have in my pocket. Um, my throat's got a bit. I couldn't have a bit of your drink down there, sir. Could you, you couldn't put the camera on the chat where I'm going to take a drink off, could you? Because he is ugly. <laughs> so I'm going to play the blues on this rusty old harmonica. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> so here we go with the depth of blues. This morning, and I woke up yesterday. I said, I woke up this morning, and I woke up yesterday. If I wake up tomorrow, that will be three days in a row. I'm now going to talk about, uh, for a couple of minutes about things that mystify me during my life, and they've mainly been ducks. And when I was a kid, about eight years old, um, which was, what, 20 years ago now? <laughs> sort of. There was a man called Danny Kay. I always remember a record he used to sing, and I used to sit on my sofa in my little house there, because I had a house when I was eight, of course. And I always remember a record he sung, which was, There Once Was an Ugly Duckling. And the lyrics always surprised me. It used to go, There once was an ugly duckling, his feathers all stubby and torn. And ladies and gentlemen, what did that duckling turn into? A swan? No. It's a load of bollocks. <laughs> it is. Duckling turns into a duck. <laughs> it does. Signet ends up as a swan. <laughs> and then still on the duck motif, because I know a lot about ducks, I remember watching on the television Donald Duck. And I don't know if anyone's ever noticed this, but every time Donald Duck has a bath, he wraps a towel around his middle. He does. And I thought in my childhood's innocence, because I was about nine or ten by now, because we had a telly. Well, we did. I went to grammar school. Twice. <laughs> don't know why I said that. Donald Duck wraps a towel around his middle, he waddles off, he goes into the bathroom, he shuts the door, he sings a hideous song, and then he comes out, and what does he do? He puts on a jacket that only comes down to there. <laughs> well, I'm going to be off now. Um, before I go, I'm going to ask anyone in the audience, anyone at all, anyone in this audience ever been skint? Yeah. Anyone, uh, just any one person shout out, anyone would like to know how to travel around anywhere you like in the United Kingdom for nothing? Yeah. All right, you up there, where would you like to go to? Well, Swindon, all right. Swindon. <laughs> well, that's a bit of a, not a very good uh, answer, but yeah, all right, you want to go to Swindon for nothing, right? What you do, and you do this by British Rail, and it always works. For Swindon, I believe you get on at Paddington. You just, true, see, Mr. Geography, Mr. Showbiz. <laughs> you get on the train, and you just walk on the train without a ticket. It doesn't matter these days, you just walk through the barrier, right? And you sit on that train, and you wait for an old lady to go to the toilet. This isn't sexist, in a way, because it has to be an old lady. It has to be. Because it always is one. And you follow that old lady to the toilet. Uh, you sit on the train for, what, three minutes? You follow that old lady to the toilet, and you watch her go in, and then after about a minute and a half, you knock on the door like this. And in this sort of voice, you go, Tickets, please. <laughs> that old lady will say, Oh, but I'm on the toilet. And exactly the same voice, you say, Can you put your ticket under the door, please? The ticket comes under the door. Paddington, Swindon, nothing. <laughs> and it works anywhere you like in the United Kingdom. Get a ticket, not a criminal record. <laughs> yeah, good night. The extraordinary talent of uh, Mr. Malcolm Hardy. He is a great, a great talent indeed, isn't he, ladies and gentlemen? As I said, a great international show. Please welcome a great international act. The fantastic, delicious tones of the voice of Mr. Will Downing, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I'm wishing on a star 
the best of the Pogues on album and video. Bonjour. Et soif, vous acceptez ma toile contre une bière? At BP, we've just put together a special fact-finding team. Their job is to find out, as unobtrusively as possible, how well our stations are living up to the new, even higher standards of BP's worldwide customer service program. We're pleased to say the initial results have been very encouraging. BP, on the move. Comet are offering interest-free credit on selected Zanussi products. <coughs> Plus a free two-year guarantee. You know where to come. Our Price Music present you know Simply Red. Simply Red, the new album, Stars. Simply stunning at our price music. Welcome back indeed, ladies and gentlemen, to The Happening, where we have a special international flavour to the show. In the commercial break that you didn't see, I tried out a new catchphrase on the audience here, and it seemed to work rather well. Uh, so I'll try it for you at home. Have a cop hold of my new catchphrase then. <laughs> yes, thank you very much indeed. I pride myself on my catchphrases. As I say, an international show this week. Truly internationals, um, we've gone all over the globe, and our next artist, for instance, is all the way from Newcastle. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Mickey Hutton. Good evening. Yeah. Here's a quick impression. Bobby Charlton. <laughs> and here's another one. That these are from Status Quo. Uncannily accurate, I think you'll admit. I'm from Newcastle, by the way. Can you tell? Yeah. Because I've lost my accent. When I, when I come down here, I love shopping. I do love shopping. But my favourite shop at the moment has definitely got to be Marks and Spencer's Food Hall. <laughs> what a great shop. You can get anything in there. It's perfect. Like, if you're a vegetarian, you can buy vegetarian food. It's packed. It's cooked. It's great. If you're living by yourself, you can buy smaller portions. If you're living with somebody, you can buy meals for two. I, of course, always buy the uh, single northern man starter pack. <laughs> which is a half-eaten curry and four cans of special brew. But <laughs> I was working this club up north last week, and there's a young woman in the audience getting married. And she was having a hen night in the club. And what she'd done was, she'd booked a male stripper for the night. Well, I'd never seen anything like it. This man did things with his body that I've never ever seen a northern man do. <laughs> he did the washing up. <laughs> the ironing, I tell you. <laughs> you want to try telling that one, the northern clubs? <laughs> All the women are sitting there going, he's right, you know. <laughs> and all the men are going, we'll get you later, you hippie. It's a very sad story, because when I was born, my parents actually abandoned me in the jungle. And I was brought up by wolves. 
And I'll tell you what, it's a real pain being brought up by a second division football team. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you've been a great audience. My name is Mickey Hutton. Good night. Ladies and gentlemen, from Mickey Hutton, we go to another marvellous act. Somebody that mixes all sorts of strange things together in a perfect happening sort of way. Please welcome Mr. Ian Saville. <laughs> Good evening. <clears throat> evening. My name's Ian Saville. As you've just heard, I'm going to be doing some magic tricks for you this evening, but some political magic tricks, some radical conjuring, some socialist conjuring. And, but before I do that, I'd just like to tell I was on the train the other day, and this bloke came up to me with a newspaper. Exactly. With a newspaper, very similar to the, the one I have here. And he came up to me and he said, I've got the Times. He was standing right next to me. He had this paper and I grabbed it off him. And I said, don't you realise, I said, I wouldn't buy the Times or the Sunday Times or Today or the News of the World or any of Rupert Murdoch's papers. And I started tearing it up. And I said, I wouldn't, I wouldn't buy his papers. I wouldn't watch his television programmes. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go on, no. I, they asked me to go on, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't go, and I was tearing the paper up, and I said, and so I'm going to tear it, and you come right up to me with your, and, and I'm, not very, I'm not very strong either, so I was having a lot of problems. Uh, so I said, so you come right up to me with your copy of the Times, and you think I'm just, well, I've torn up your copy of the Times. So, and, I, and I, I'm a very tidy person as well. And I picked it up, so I said, so, there, I've to torn up, so what do you think about that? Aye, aye, aye because I was very annoyed. <laughs> and he looked at me and he said, just a minute, he said, what did you think I said? And I said, well, you said I've got the times. And he said, no. He said, what I actually said was, have you got the time? So I said, well, my watch is broken. You, you shouldn't have had that paper anyway. That's what I, he said, if you look carefully, he said, if you'd look carefully, you would have seen that it wasn't the times I was carrying it anyway. It was in fact the independent. So I said, are you sure? He said, it is, I am, are you? which I don't know what he meant, but he said it anyway. So, so I said, no, you're just trying to cover up. You're so ashamed of having bought the Times, you're trying to pretend it was the Independent. He said, no, I know what paper I bought. I bought this. I said, well, prove it. He said, prove it. I said, prove it. He said, how can I prove it? He said, eventually, I got him to put the whole thing back together again. And he was quite right. It was, in fact, the Independent. There we are, Ian Savile, ladies and gentlemen. I'm up here in the balcony, or the, as when I was at school, my headmaster used to say the bollocony, because we haven't really seen some of the happening people up here in the balcony. We've seen those sort of strange people with the bits of dribble and stuff downstairs. But look at the upstairs happening people. This is what if you gather, if you put a net out across the west end of London, this is what's dragged in. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome these happening people, you see. Are you well up here? Sad, really. There you are then. But welcome and thank you for the thousands of letters you've been sending in. The show's going to be staying the same though. Now, ladies and gentlemen, both upstairs and downstairs, we welcome a truly great act indeed. Please welcome Mr. Ben E. King. Mm -hmm. There is a rose in Spanish Harlem. And red rose in Spanish Harlem.
pick the rose and watch her as she grows in my garden. Thank you very much indeed. Now it's time to welcome to this stage a man, again international, flown in from New York, the producer of this show, went to see him. Let's give him as warm a welcome as he might get, were he, say, at home, at any of your homes. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr Vic Henley. <laughs> How are you? All right, good. <laughs> so anyway, okay, here, here's the joke joke. Little boy goes to the zoo with his mom and his dad, all right? He's walking around the zoo and he's looking at all the animals. He gets separated, he's just with his mother. He's standing in front of where the elephants are. So he pulls on his mom's skirt, he goes, Mom, what's that hanging down from the elephant? His mother says, well, son, that's his trunk. He says, no, no, Mom, further back. She says, well, son, that's his tail. He says, no, no, Mom, between the trunk and the tail, hanging down there, almost touching the ground. She said, oh, that's nothing, shoves him out of the way. He's confused. He goes and gets his dad. He drags his dad back down to the same spot. He asks his dad the same question. He goes, Dad, big guy, what's that hanging down from the elephant? His dad says, well, son, that's his trunk. He says, no, no, Studley. <laughs> Further back. He says, well, son, that's his tail. He says, no, no, Stallion, between the trunk and the tail. Hanging down there, almost touching the ground. Mom said it was nothing. He said, well, <laughs> Your mother's spoiled. <laughs> you people drink here a lot. I've noticed that. I've only been here a couple of days. You people drink a ton in this country. Oh, <laughs> and we're proud of it. It's, you guys drink here like prohibition's coming back tomorrow. I don't know if you, which is okay with me where I'm from because you drink a lot in the South too. So, you know, drink, 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 puke, throw up, go all out, get the knots on the back of your head where the toilet seat falls down on you all night long. I don't care, drink. If, don't shoot tequila, I think would be my only tip to y'all if you're drinking now. Ladies, I don't know about y'all, but men, men shoot tequila, there's a fat, nasty woman in the bar, you're gonna find her and take her home. It's a, no, it is true, it's a rule. You wake up the next day, you got a manatee in the bed with you. Jacques Cousteau is nowhere to be seen. You have a harpoon in the house when you need one. See, guys do that, women don't do that. Guys will get drunk and go home with somebody they don't want to go home with. They don't care. Four o'clock in the morning, he's had two cases of beer, half a bottle of whiskey, as long as she's got a pulse and she's not too heavy to drag. That's the way it is. See, but women don't do that. That's my point. You never see pretty women in a bar getting shit-faced, lowering their standards. I haven't. I've looked. You never see five or six good-looking women sitting around a table, pounding shots of whiskey, talking to each other, going, you know, Heather, that Iranian is driving me wild. Something about a man with a turban. I am moist and excited. Take me away, Abdul. <laughs> so, uh, I know I'm gonna get out of here. I, was, I went to college in the South, uh, in Alabama. I graduated, there's a shock, I'm sure. I think school's pretty much overrated, though. They teach you a lot of stuff that you never really use, like math, calculus, calculus, calculus word problems. You guys know what I'm talking about? They give you all the information, ask you the question. The two aren't related anywhere at all. <laughs> First test I took, I knew I was getting out of this class. I got problem number one. Uh, Farmer Brown's putting a fence around his field. Now, the field is 100 yards long by 30 yards wide. If the fence needs to be 8.5 feet tall by 2.5 feet wide with a 3.5 foot swinging gate, and fence costs $2.75 per square yard. Who was the bass player for the Rolling Stones? I, could, I hated math. Pi, pi. Everybody knows what pi is, right? Here's a perfect example of something that everybody knows that's never come up in your entire life. Right? Because everybody knows pi. 3.1415 pi, pi r squared, pi, 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 22 sevenths pi. Has it ever come up? Has a policeman ever pulled you over? We're going to have to give you a ticket. You were going 70 plus pi. <laughs> Does a plumber come to your house and go, well, we can fix that for you for 30 pounds plus 2 pi. Here's your change, the cosine. 
Thanks very much. Enjoy the rest of the show. Thanks a lot. Mr. Ben E. King, ladies and gentlemen. I tell you, if you don't mind, everybody do me a favor. Just put your hands together nice and easy right about there. This particular song I recorded many years ago and just recently on an EMI Manhattan record. So we're gonna dedicate this one to everybody. Hold on to that feeling.
Thank you very much. There are moments in every dog's day when he deserves the delicious meaty taste of pedigree schmackos. They're made with real meat, and that's the kind of goodness top breeders look for. Schmackos from Piggery Chum. Pedigree goodness in snacks and treats. Looking for a toothbrush? Consider these words of wisdom. Wisdom care for more teeth in Britain than anyone else. Wise up to wisdom. Price music play you the sound of the suburbs. Hit me with your rhythm stick. Hit me. Collected together Hit for the me. first time, Tom Robinson, Ian Jury, Blondie, Elvis Costello. Top ten hits from the Stranglers, the Boomtown Rats, Martha and the Muffins, and the Jam. All these only on the sound of the suburbs at our price music. to the happening. Now, please welcome the incredible talent, the lovely voice, the enormity and the marvellousness of Mr. Will Downing, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. Became a memory, and in my revelry, there is only loneliness to see. Of your charms and loveliness, true love comes one time. I love was springtime to see. And the touch and warmth of a love I found and it is a big I'm alone again too soon. So fast, I'm 
I'm alone again Too soon
So then. I think we should get a few people on stage here now. Have a bit of a frenzy together at the end. Have you enjoyed this evening's show, ladies and gentlemen? Yes. Good, I'm glad you all have. Just, uh, me just to thank our guests, I think. We've got a bit of a song going on there, maybe? Yes. So let's thank Tony Hanks, Malcolm Hardy, and Mickey Hutton, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. <laughs> Ian Savile and Vic Henley. <laughs> and of course, the fabulous, well, in fact, of course, let's thank the superb members of the band. The Devil Dogs, as we'll call them this evening. But most of all, we'd like to thank the fabulous Mr. Will Downing and the marvellous Mr. Benny King, ladies and gentlemen. This is my love, I'm tumbling down.